Advanced care planning is usually in my mind from the first time that I'm, I meet a person and often I do only meet a person the one time or maybe once with a follow-up. Um, so, so in my mind I'm thinking about that person's care now but also um, what the possible trajectories might be into the future and what, what their care may be and what's going to be really important for them. If I'm giving a person a diagnosis that they haven't realised or is going to come as a shock, then that's a big conversation in itself. And we may not go into advanced care planning in that conversation. That may be something that, although we often even just started a little bit, just starting to think about the future and then making sure that I'm handing that over, handing the, handing the baton on to somebody else, which is might be a family member who says, yep, this is really important, we'll work with mum, and generally back to their primary care, their general practitioner. The conversations need a time and time and quiet and calm so that person can think um, and, and feel safe um, and then be, have a gentle conversation about thinking about what is important to them. And the nice thing in the New Zealand Advanced Care Plan is that you've got those first main two pages which are really all about you and what's important to you that you can work through with somebody. And you know, they're probably the most important pages in the plan. And being aware that even if people are developing real changes in their brain or are on the, the journey of a dementia, people know themselves and they know what's important to them and they can express that for a long, long, long time. Um, and that's what you're really trying to get to. And if you've got a person where you're not sure if they understand or can remember, but you have that conversation, and then you have the same conversation again, maybe they don't remember the last one, but they're consistently telling you the same things are important, and then you have it a third time, and that they're consistently telling you, then you can feel pretty comfortable that what they're telling you is what's really important to them. So the conversations that I have with people often are talking about the end of life, so talking about death. Um, and if we're, if we're moving into what they want for themselves, or sometimes with a very disabled person talking mainly with a whānau, but if possible with everyone, then it's yeah, talking about what will be important right at the very last stages of life and when they die. And in fact, sometimes that's, that's where people want to start because it's quite a concrete thing that they can think about. And sometimes people's fear, their biggest fear, some people's biggest fear is dying, but some people's biggest fear is, is losing their independence. And so you go to a place where they can manage the conversation. And if they feel that, oh, I've managed that, then you can go to a different place in the conversation. Thinking about whether a person still has the capacity, the mental capacity, to make an advanced care plan. Um, in my experience, um, the majority of, of people who I meet have got the capacity to contribute to and make an advanced care plan. It's giving them the time and opportunity and having somebody walk along with them and then write down, help them write down their answers or write down their answers for them so that you end up with something written down. Because that's, the conversations are really important but the gift is when it's written down and it can be referred back to when it may be needed one day. So the way to know whether somebody has the capacity to write or, or work with someone to write an advanced care plan is to start along that path because it will become apparent if that person really cannot stay in the moment with the, com with the conversation at all, can't process at all what it is that you're talking about, gives answers but they're not consistent. If it becomes really complex, it might be that you're, that you're wondering what's going on with this person's brain and you might want to refer to somebody like um, myself and my colleagues. Um, to look into that further, but it's usually it's usually pretty apparent uh, because after all you're talking about what is important to a person.